Now, let's go to the ABC, where Twitter commentators masquerading as journalists have been warned to break free of their ideological inner-city bubble and start shaping news content for the everyday Australian. ABC News director Gavin Morris sparked outrage among many of Auntie's finest reporters for telling them something conservative viewers have known all their lives. ABC journalists are too focused on the interests of inner-city left-wing elites and don't spend enough time listening to the concerns of real people living in such places as central Queensland. Now, this was a great scoop by the Sydney Morning Herald, which spoke to three ABC journalists present in the staff briefing where Morris vented his frustrations. And who could blame him? In the last two weeks, the ABC has been forced to reprimand two separate senior reporters for tweeting anti-conservative biased content. First, we had the 7.30's chief political correspondent, Laura Tingle, tweeting about, quote, ideological bastardry and asking whether Scott Morrison was feeling smug. Then this week, the ABC's Queensland state political reporter, Stephanie Zillman, reporting that on Twitter that Queensland opposition leader Deb Frecklington's youth curfew plan in Townsville was, quote, dog whistling, a term used to suggest a person is using coded language that is secretly racist. Now, I've spoken with two senior Labor staffers working in Anastasia Palaszczuk's government who concede that while the optics of the Townsville curfew are bad in larger cities such as Brisbane, it may prove to actually be a popular policy leading up to an election and an electorate struggling with youth crime. For the ABC's state political reporter to publicly smear the opposition leader's name with a slur designed to stoke racism accusations, the ABC loses all credibility when reporting on political issues in Queensland, particularly so close to an election. This is not some work experience kid, first year on the job, who got swept up in the vitriol of Twitter. This is a seasoned journalist charged by the taxpayer with reporting fairly and accurately on Queensland politics. But with standards like this, it is no wonder the ABC falsely reported Deb Frecklington had been referred by her own party to the, quote, election watchdog. This claim was false, and the broader story that Frecklington had committed some sin for being in the same room as developers, who never even donated to her party. ABC journalist Josh Robinson wrote a story using the phrase election watchdog, which is strange because the body in question was actually the Queensland Electoral Commission, not a major investigatory body like the Crime and Corruption Commission, which journalists commonly refer to as the corruption watchdog. The Electoral Commission is hardly a watchdog. It has very limited powers. Saying Frecklington had been referred to a watchdog and burying the correct and full name of the body is journalistic sleight of hand, designed to make the allegations appear to be far more serious and credible than they actually were which is why you had to read eight paragraphs into this story by Robertson before the Electoral Commission was even mentioned. Perhaps if journalists removed themselves from their Twitter bubbles and started talking to real people, they would learn that the public is sick of their biased reporting. And as their boss Gavin Morris suggests, until they do so, real people and conservatives will be continue to get let down by the national broadcaster. Now, Kel, what do you make of that? The uh, the watchdog, apparently. Uh, look, can, can I just say, the ABC has had a left-wing bias for a long time. We all know that, and we, we often complain about it. You've talked about it. Chris has talked about it. And, and it's, it's sort of understandable in that they're public servants, and public servants tend to lean to the left because left-wing governments will expand the public service and will pay them all that kind of thing. Now, that, if that's where they are, that's where they are. The problem is how you fix what they do on the air because what they're doing is they're not representing most Australians. They're assuming that whatever their opinion is is the only opinion you need to hear regardless of how you vote. I've been trying to work out how you fix it. But the problem is clear. There's no doubt about the problem. How do you fix it? My latest theory, right, <laughs> this, I like this one, is instead of getting money off every single tax, Australian taxpayer, many of whom don't watch or listen to the ABC and many of whom sit there fuming because it's so left-wing, uh, what you do is you make uh, giving money to the ABC optional on your tax form. Mm. There's a little box you tick that says you can take an extra 1% of my tax and give it to the ABC. In the age of computers, that should be possible. Therefore, the only people paying for this are people who like this. Uh, and the rest of us don't have to pay for stuff that we don't agree with and we'll never agree with. Now, I, I don't know whether that's feasible, but you've got to find a way to practically solve it. I mean, you, you cannot just say, oh, we've appointed Ida Butros, she'll sort it out. You can't. The, the, the 
the culture of the ABC is like that. Um, I mean, I, I've also suggested that the headquarters of the ABC in a big place like Sydney, Melbourne, should be moved as far to the western suburbs as possible. Well, so they, they, are, they do say that they're going to do that. They've got a plan to kind of to, to broaden out their workforce. But I guess, you know, this, this is a problem where, when you've got um, taxpayer-funded media that, that's, that's global. The BBC has had an issue. Yeah. And a couple of months ago, <laughs> they're, they're saying that they're going to start sacking journalists that breach their, their rules on Twitter. I think um, there's a couple of things at play here and you've just jumped to one of them. I think for the rest of us in either corporate life or if you're uh, working for another media organisation, if you breach the code of conduct in relation to social media posts, you will be counselled and eventually dismissed. And, and that's appropriate because it, it's simply not a journalist of any shape or forms... Um, it's not in their mandate to to commentate and to express a personal view, and that's the the sort of bleeding, if you like, Jack, of journalism into commentary, into activism, and with with the ABC. And I'm a fan of the ABC. The I've said this to Chris before. The first job I ever got paid for as a journalist was with the ABC Northwest in Carrara, yep. and the story was about the Panawanica <laughs> Dunny Derby. I do tell you, don't despise the day of. They do beginning. some great work, particularly Absolutely. in the regional areas, and that's the point. Yes. and that's the point. So so. You, you know, if Garen, Gavin Morris's comments in that story... He's right. He's absolutely spot on. Um, to, to the um, Lord, the Tingle and Zilman examples, Zilman examples, you know, that's that's not... That, your role is to be fair and accurate. The Journalist Code of Ethics states to be fair and accurate but, and... Uh, and I just feel like there is no, there no, there are never any consequences. Yeah, can on. I just point out how big a change this is? Because yes, it is. when I joined the ABC, I, I wasn't a veteran when I joined the ABC. <laughs> I was quite young, and there was an induction course. You had to do an induction course, and the induction. I, I sat there and heard them say it. Uh, you're a reporter. You do not comment. I was working for Radio Current Affairs. Yeah. There, there were two commentary programs: notes on the news and news commentary, and we got academics to come and yes. do those. Journalists, ABC journalists, did not do them. That was the policy. Now, the ABC's made a policy change that says our staff can express opinions. That policy has to be reversed.